Hey everybody, my name's Joe and I'm the 3D Printing Professor. Let's start the discussion about 3D printing at the very beginning, which is a very good place to start. For people who are just hearing about 3D printing for the first time, it can sound like magic. You hear about this machine that can be in your house that at the push of a button fills up with whatever you want and people are doing amazing things with it every day. It's, it's no wonder that there's a mystique surrounding 3D printing. But the thing is, obviously 3D printing isn't mysterious or magical. It's real, and real things have limitations and challenges associated with them. So, before you get too excited, let me clear up a few things. 3D printing really has no limit to the things that it can do, but that doesn't mean that it can do anything. So let's start with answering the basic question, what is 3D printing? Now, this is a difficult question to answer because 3D printing describes a whole bunch of different processes that are all very similar. Generally speaking, they are computer controlled machines that work with a process called additive manufacturing. That is to say, you start with nothing and build up the thing that you want to create. So how do 3D printers do what they do? Well, generally speaking, they work in layers. They'll build something a layer at a time with each layer stacking on the one below it to create what they want. These layers are sometimes very, very thin, so small that you can't even tell that they're there in some machines. It's a bit like building a building with bricks or, or building a snowman with snow. You generally need to have something underneath it to support it unless you build that into the process and remove that support material afterwards. Because they're computer controlled, that means that they can create repeatable designs with less human interaction. And also, being additive means that there's less waste. Not that there's no waste. Oftentimes, supports and, and failed prints generate some degree of waste. But less waste, and generally speaking, a lot less waste than subtractive or other manufacturing processes. Because it's computer controlled, it lends itself well to iterative design. That is to say, trying to do the same thing over and over again with just little changes each time. With a 3D printer on hand, it's so relatively cheap and easy to just crank out another design that there's no reason not to just do it over and over again until you get the design, what you're trying to make, exactly the way that you want it. It takes a process that in the past took months and cuts it down to weeks, sometimes even days, and that's super exciting. Let's talk a little bit about reproducibility and what that means. Say that I make something, I design it, I try it, I iterate that design a couple of times and get it just right. And then I take those files, I put them up online where you can get them, and if you have a similar 3D printer, all you have to do is take that file, prepare it for your 3D printer, load the 3D printer with filament, run it, and go. Of course, is it perfect? Does it work every time? No, it's, it's not, and, and sometimes prints fail and sometimes things happen, but more often than not, it does work. So let's review. 3D printing describes a number of processes, some of which are machines that could be in your home that with the push of a few buttons additively create something from a design that somebody else made and put online for you. So now that we've broken it down, 3D printing isn't actual magic. Though, you know, it still is pretty magical at times. Now, there will be more discussions in the future, so I hope you'll stick around for those. And by stick around, I mean hit that subscribe button so that you'll be notified of these discussions. As always, I thank you very much for watching. Safety first, and I'll see you next time. Of course, if it's a...